Whoa there, step back from the stresses that today have thrown at you and just breathe for a moment. Your body's most fundamental priority is survival. Sometimes we forget that, but our body knows. When it comes to survival, the voice actually comes in really handy. We need our voices to communicate with each other, to identify with each other, to feel part of a group. We need our voices to express our needs and emotions and to call for help. Many of us need our voices for our livelihoods. As parents, we use our voices to guide our children and keep them safe. But in us all, it starts early. Children need their voices so that their caregivers can hear them and keep them safe. This is why a compromised, fatigued or lost voice can make us feel really vulnerable and stressed. Have you ever heard a voice on the radio or on the phone and been really attracted to them? You've built up this beautiful image of them in your head, but then been quite disappointed when you've seen them. Or the other way around. Have you ever been really attracted to someone's look until you hear them speak? Have you had to turn off the radio or a podcast because the voice is just grating on you? And do you frequently forget someone's name within moments of meeting them? It is human nature to start working someone out as soon as we meet them. Are they safe to be around? Can we identify with them? Is this someone who's going to be a friend? Could we do business together? Or is this someone I should avoid? So no wonder we don't pay much attention to the name. A lot of this information comes from the sound of the voice. And these are survival essentials that we need to work someone out within the first few minutes of meeting them. We can identify a lot from a voice. And equally, when we speak, we are showing our own identity. It's a bit like the vocal equivalent of getting naked. Often when we think of the voice, we just focus on the mouth because that's what we can see. But when we have a look inside, it's actually a TARDIS. We've got your lungs, your larynx, and your mouth and nose. Place your hands in front of your mouth and go, ah, here we go. One, two, three, ah. Did you feel the air on your hand? That was the air leaving your lungs to power the voice here. Place your hands in front of your throat, just there. Ah, uh, here we go. One, two, three, ah. Uh, and you probably felt a buzz underneath your fingertips. Those are your vocal folds inside your larynx at the front of your throat, vibrating to make the sound. Now we shape the sound. We make our words, our sentences, our vowels, our consonants by changing the shape up here in the mouth and also using the nasal cavity. But look, I can create a sound by flicking underneath my chin and I can shape that sound into different vowels. So it's like this. That's a new party trick for you. But back to why we're here. In order for your voice to work efficiently and healthily, all three systems, your lungs, your larynx and your mouth and nose, need to not only be working really well independently, but also in harmony and coordination with each other. When the voice has a problem, these individual mechanisms can get out of balance. Your larynx sits at the top of your windpipe at the front of your throat. The food pipe is behind the larynx and runs down the back, which is why you are so clever to be able to kick that food up and over the top of your larynx down the food pipe to your stomach. But sometimes it can go wrong, and that is when we choke. 
Your larynx is hugely complex, but as a unit, it can move up and down because your windpipe is like a hoover tube. It's stretchy. Place your hand at the front of your throat and swallow. You should feel the larynx move up and down. The larynx is a complex system of cartilages, ligaments and muscles. Inside are your vocal folds. They're tiny, they're only about the size of the half moon on your thumbnail. Here's a picture of them, a picture looking down from above. Just imagine for the moment that the person is lying on their back looking up towards the ceiling. The vocal folds look big in these photos, but they are actually only about the size of the half moon on your thumbnail. They vibrate at varying speeds. Within themselves, and also with the help of the external cartilages of the larynx, they can change mass, length and tension. A thicker, more relaxed vocal fold will vibrate slower, which we hear as a lower pitch. A thinner vocal fold with more tension will vibrate faster, which we hear as a higher pitch, like guitar strings. The vocal folds can also vary mass, length and tension, and vary the way in which they vibrate in order to create different qualities of voice. But that is for another day. Notice the vocal folds are shiny. This is because mucus glands sit just above them and provide necessary lubricating mucus. My female vocal folds vibrate at a frequency of around 200 to 220 times a second when I speak. We call this 200 to 220 hertz. The average speaking pitch of a male voice usually sits around 100 to 120 hertz. Note that we change pitch while we speak. This is called intonation. If I don't, my voice sounds like this and doesn't change pitch at all and that would be really boring. If you are a singer and sing an A4, your vocal folds will be vibrating at a frequency of 440 times a second. If you sing a top C, your vocal folds will be vibrating 1037 times a second. Whoa, big respect sopranos. Bearing in mind that your vocal folds are very small and vibrating at speed, they need lubricating mucus to prevent them from getting hot and swelling. With a clean, flat surface area when they meet, they can create a good, wholesome sound. If they swell, they can't meet fully, and this is when the voice sounds hoarse. So it may seem grim at first sight, but good lubricating mucus is essential for a healthy voice. When we get an infection, such as a cold, our mucus turns snotty and sticky, causing all kinds of havoc but more on this in a bit. Your lungs, larynx, mouth and nose have one fundamental priority. Keeping you alive. Your lungs supply oxygen to your vital organs and remove carbon dioxide from the body. Your larynx is a powerful valve that can protect your windpipe and your lungs. It's vital in the act of swallowing and it's a pressure valve. Your mouth and nose are not only essential for air leaving and entering the body, but also they break down the food before you swallow it, kicking it up over the top of your windpipe down the food pipe. But what happens to us when we are in danger or under stress? The body comes to the rescue. Your heart rate speeds up, preparing you to flee or fight. Your digestion slows down, freeing up energy again for you to get out of danger. Your pupils dilate so you can see what's around you. And the larynx comes to the rescue and starts to squeeze to protect your lungs. Yes, that old chestnut. Have you ever felt that tightening in the throat? A frog in the throat, a feel of just 
constant constriction. Well, this is great if your lungs actually do need protection, but not so good when you want to speak or sing. Try this. Sit on a chair, place your hands underneath the seat of the chair and lift your feet off the ground. Now try and lift yourself and the chair off the ground. Here we go. Do you feel a squeeze here? Try speaking. Very tight. That's how tight your larynx is able to squeeze. And you notice that vocalizing at the same time is really hard. When we're unwell, or if we have an allergic reaction, our bodies produce thick, sticky mucus. Not just in the nose, but in the throat as well. Sticky mucus doesn't lubricate the vocal folds. But life goes on, and often we have to keep talking. But this puts our vocal folds more at risk. Without the proper lubrication, the vocal folds dry out, heat up and swell. And that's why we sound hoarse or croaky when we're ill. Coughing makes it worse, forcing the vocal folds to slam together harshly. On top of that, respiratory infections often inflame the delicate mucosal lining of the vocal folds, making them even more sensitive. And here, the downward spiral begins. When the vocal folds are swollen, they can't meet cleanly, so the sound is weak. We compensate by squeezing harder to force a better sound. But this squeezing obstructs the mucus glands even more, causing the vocal folds to become drier, more swollen and more vulnerable. Then, when the illness has gone away or the stress has passed, the voice often doesn't bounce back because this squeezing becomes a habit. The brain has learnt a new pattern, locking in tension and dryness. And when that happens, everything falls out of sync. Breath becomes less efficient, the jaw tightens, the tongue pulls back and tenses. The entire vocal system gets tied up in knots. The good news? With the right support, these patterns can be undone and your voice can find its balance again.